Hey uh, I just wanted to um, share with you um, a really simple stamp idea. Um, this is one that I've uh, just done and I'll just turn it around so you can see. Okay, I don't know if you can see that very well. This is quite sunny today. There's um, a stamp that I've just made yesterday. Here's um, the, the image that this stamp produces. And the lady who's bought it would really like um, another seed head to go with this, but she would like uh, cow parsley. What I've done is I've drawn um, a cow parsley here, except um, I think the one that she's probably going to want needs to be slightly bigger. Okay, I'm a lot happier with this one. Um, it just seems to work a bit better and I think that she could use this stamp, you know, in pretty much any direction. Um, so I'm going to use this one instead. I'm a lot happier with that seed head than this one here. I think this one looks a bit more scruffy. Um, so I'm going to go with this one. I'm happy with this one. To transfer this onto rubber, you literally just turn it over and then rub the back like you did at school and then your image is onto the rubber and then you can go ahead and carve. I've just got a piece of rubber that's um, left over and you can see I've taken the seed head out of this bit. So what we're going to do is turn it over and we're just going to find a place where that's going to fit on. Try not to go too close to the edges because the edges of the rubber are um, when they've been moulded in however they make these um, the ends always kind of dip down, which means you're not going to get a good print. So just stay away from the edges. Some people cut it off. Um, and once you're happy, just hold that down in place. And then grab something that's um, got a nice sort of flat surface like this. This is um, one of the crystal nail files. And all I do is literally rub that onto your rubber. Don't take your finger off completely, but just kind of hold it so that you know it's not going to move and then just check that your print has come out all okay, which it has. So there we go. Now I like to hold my stamp quite close um, when I'm cutting out. So what I do is I literally cut as close as I can around the image and then I carve it. So we'll do that now. And for that I just use um, a little knife and literally cut as close as I can. So I keep all the little bits as well. Um, I've got a, a massive tub just full of little bits for when I get bored and I make some buttons or something out of the leftovers. So there we go. So you have something ready to carve and what I use is literally a carving tool here and you can have lots of different nibs that go in the end there. So this one is a number one. There we go. I'll get you the make of this one. Um, there, You can use speedball as well. Speedball have like a number of different types of nibs. So what we're going to do um, is just get comfortable with um, you know your tools and get it as close to you as you need it to be and you're literally just going to try and keep this as smooth as possible because you don't want um, this line to become jaggedy and when you carve down a thin line try and keep your um, nib at a bit of an angle because the more rubber you can leave down the side of what you're cutting, the stronger that piece is going to be. So if I was to carve straight down either side of that, then you've got a very weak line. And see how I'm moving my left hand to change the direction of the cut. Uh, that's because the um, if you were to try and move the tool, 
and you don't get a smoother cut. But I think, you know, with that sort of thing, you end up finding your own um, techniques and things. So the lady's going to use this for um, fabric stamping, I think. So she wants it without a stem because she'll actually machine stitch a stem down here. Okay, so now that we've done the main part of this seed head, I just want to give it a little bit of character. So um, I'm just going to put a tiny little hole in the top of each one. And that's all you do. Put the point of your um, carving tool in the middle of the hole and then twist your left hand and that will produce a little hole. If I bring that, I don't know if you can see that. See the little holes in there? So just do that to all of them. Okay, so there we go. So all we're going to do is we're just going to clean up, so remove all the excess rubber. Okay, right, so we've finished carving and it's all ready just to test. Before we put the tools away, uh, we need to make sure that this is going to print okay with no um, other pieces showing. And sometimes the quickest way to do that is just to chuck some ink on it, print it and see if it comes out okay. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more colour to this picture. And so I'm just going to use turquoise and I'm literally... This is a like a, a stack um, that you can get um, from Wilkinson's. And the colours are really nice actually and they've lasted alright. Um, I wouldn't say the pigment's great on... They don't seem to have a name either, they've got absolutely no information on them whatsoever. Okay, so let's try that. Press it flat in both directions rather than kind of pointing down and then just lift that off. So I'm really happy with um, how that's come out and I think the size compared to the, the poppy seed heads have worked out really well. You could also, um, you can buy fabric inks like this so you can do pictures like this on t-shirts. Um, or bags or any kind of fabric if you want to design your own fabric too you can do that so there you go I hope you found that useful and thanks for watching cheers bye